Hello and welcome to Mission Ghana uh, with support from uh, Star Ghana, uh, funding from UKA, Danida and the European Union. Let's to our very first uh, story and only a single midwife served the Dafema Health Centre in the uh, Upper West Region. Though there are supporting staff, the only midwife says work is affected when she had to attend to other duties in the catchment area to deal with emergencies. The pregnancies are occurring, deliveries are going on. Nature cannot wait for the roads to be made before women would deliver. Ensuring their safety is therefore key. The Dafiama Health Center has a projected population of 13,642 for 2017. One midwife is therefore not enough. If I'm away for a, a, a official duty and there's a labor case, they have to refer the case to the nearest health facility, that is the hospital. So I think if the, the government should come in or the management should come in to support us with another service personnel, like two midwives or three, in addition to the current one, it will make work more easier. The area has a women in fertility age of 3,274, and they must be taken care of. The facility is in quite good condition and offers attention to several women who otherwise would have resorted to other means of health care. Five health centers and 13 CHIPS compounds are what the district has. Staffing is a challenge. Nurses and midwives are the highest level of staff in the district. We have been making efforts trying to see how we can get locum physician assistance and we've been able to engage the services of one physician assistant currently in one of the health centers. The facilities with no medical officers are just allowed to charge something very minimal. And so their generation is not also much. So how then do we afford the services of these physician assistants who also come and they charge so much? You cannot not afford. This is negating efforts at improving health. Medical staff posted continue to leave. If you bring a midwife from Accra, you post him to the film, we say, sir, and you ask him to go and live in the same room where the committee member is living, of course, he's not going to accept that. And so they come and look at your district, and they tell you they will go and come back. And that is the last time you would ever see them. The district assembly wants some attention from central government. If you know the district very well, it's very difficult to assess some of the communities, even from the district capital. And so when people are sick there, and if they are not lucky to have a CHIPS compound, they are referred to the nearest health center. They will go there, and if they are not lucky, they will refer them to Nedoli. And if they are not lucky, they will refer them to Wa. And as I said, the roads are very bad, and you don't have any means of transport there apart from these uh, motor kings. We need interventions from uh, central government and what, whoever that can support us to improve upon our roads. Until this is done, it will be difficult to attract health workers to the Dafiama Busie Isa district. Bright Nananfo, TV3. Her woes began some 13 years ago when her first, her last two children were born with abnormal curvature of the bones. She spends her entire day on the children who cannot walk or do anything for themselves. Peter Quadato spent a day with 48-year-old Rebecca Autry and her two children who are struggling to access health care and education. It was about a quarter past seven in the morning of Tuesday, October 17. And the location was at Greek in Zima Abrasu, a suburb of the Ashanti regional capital, Kumasi. In the corner of a semi completed compound house was 10 year old Eugene Autry brushing his teeth. His unusual position was not by choice anyway. Eugene was born with abnormal curvature of the bones. All two lower limbs are deformed. <laughs> Yes. 
In the hall nearby is Eugene's elder brother, 13-year-old Marvin, timidly looking on from his old and obsolete wheelchair. He was born earlier with the worst form of the abnormal curvature of the bones. All four limbs are deformed and weak. He had fallen down days earlier and fractured the left arm, which is only being treated with a balm. Eugene moves towards the bathroom to prepare for school. The cause of Marvin and Eugene's conditions are not known. Soon, two schoolboys appeared on the compound. They are Marvin's classmates who have chosen to help him to and from school. A cursory look through Marvin's books showed an excellent academic performance. <laughs> Their academic work is par excellence, yet I am unable to support them and provide their needs. My prayer is that society will come to our aid in order that they may continue to stay in school. Prince Nsafwa Yabwa and Jeffrey Pugataba took control of Marvin's obsolete wheelchair. Slowly and carefully, they guided it through hills and valleys to the makeshift school and straight into the junior high Form 1 classroom. <laughs> the head of the school confirmed Marvin's academic wonders. He is very good using the computer, phones, any electronics that is given to him, he's good in drawing. He can create a lot of things that he needs support from other people to help him finish. And if God grace, he can walk, do all things that other people can do. Back in the house, Eugene is ready, but has to wait for a taxi because unlike Marvin, he has no wheelchair. And for seven years, this is what Rebecca Autry has been going through as a sole parent to the boys. Their father, Kujotri, had abandoned the family. Sales from these food products is what is used to feed the boys and cater for their needs. But obviously, not enough for health care considerations. So I plead with all Ghanaians to help me take care of the two boys, their school and health care. I am at my wit's end. And Rebecca's only hope for medical attention during a humanitarian medical outreach at the first care hospital was unsuccessful. The condition of Marvin and his brother Eugene can only be addressed outside Ghana, according to the medical team. With her hopes dashed, Rebecca and her two challenged children would only have to wait for another humanitarian mission to try their luck. Well, probably we should be seeking a uh uh, you know, insight from health experts, you know, why some of these things happen. Because um, this afternoon also, we also showed a story where a woman has five children who are all cripples. And I think that uh, we should be uh, seeking answers from medical experts. And that's it for Mission Ghana with uh, support from uh, Star Ghana, uh, funding from UK Aid, Danida, and the European Union. Join us same time next week for another edition of Mission Ghana. <laughs>